You're listening to the All Systems Go podcast, the show that teaches you everything you need to know to put your business on autopilot. Learn how to deploy automated marketing and sales systems in your business the right way with your host, the professor of automation himself and founder of Automation Bridge, Chris Davis. Welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. I'm your host, Chris L. Davis, the founder of Automation Bridge, an online publication for small business marketing automation, where we focus on turning digital marketing professionals into automation service providers. In this episode, I interview Mike Begg of AMZ Advisors to talk about how to build an Amazon sales funnel, how to be profitable selling on Amazon. And Mike Begg, he's an entrepreneur and expert in e-commerce, digital marketing and operational nearshoring. He co-founded AMZ Advisors with his two partners in 2015 and has grown the business to managing over 10 million per year in ad spend and 100 million per year in Amazon sales. Mike and team, they also operate AMZ courses educating Amazon sellers on how to maximize the sales on the Amazon platform, how to maximize sales on the Amazon platform. And Mike loves sharing his advice. You'll, you'll, you'll see it. You'll see it come out of them. It just flows out of them so easily um, to help on anything related to Amazon and building efficient businesses. One of the things that I'll tell you to pay special attention to as we talk through this, this, this uh, podcast and I interview him, is the data and analytics that are provided by Amazon and how to strategically approach that for your business success. I won't spoil too much of the episode. I'll let Mike explain exactly what that data is and let your mind start to ideate um, around ways that you can strategically use it. So um, all that in this episode, enjoy. Mike, welcome to the All Systems Go podcast. Glad to have you on. How you doing? Chris, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me here. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you and hopefully provide some good insight for your audience. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to this as well. We got to touch base briefly um, beforehand, and I, I intentionally don't dive deep because I like to be just as enlightened as our listeners. Um, so before we dive into the, the Amazon sales funnel, <laughs> right, give our listeners a little bit of information on you, uh, your background and your business. Sure. Uh, so my name is Mike. I am originally from Connecticut, grew up in the Northeast. Uh, however, now I live in Mexico, so I finally escaped all the cold weather. Um, you know, I, Graduated school, started working in some corporate jobs, realized I wanted to do something for myself. Mm. And that kind of opened up the world of e-commerce for me. So I started building some brands, uh, importing products from China, selling them online on Amazon. Uh, that was my first experience in e-commerce. What, what, year, I, what year was this, Mike? It was like 2000, 2014, 2015, <laughs> yeah. a while ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it was the first experience. We were, you know, really good at it. We realized that a lot of, uh, big multinational, you know, billion dollar companies were on the Amazon platform and we were doing better than them. So we saw a huge opportunity there to kind of provide our services and our expertise and our knowledge of how to sell on Amazon to other companies. And that's what led me to build uh, my current company with my two other partners, AMZ advisors. And what we do is we help all brands and uh, manufacturers, grow their sales on the Amazon platform faster. Yeah. Now that's, that's interesting to me because if, if I do, if I jog my memory, if I attempt, man, um, <laughs> you said 2012, right? Uh, 2014, 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, no, I wasn't. Maybe I was an Amazon prime member back then, <laughs> but it it's, it was not what it is today, right? Yeah. Like Amazon's growth has been crazy and I don't think people were selling. Uh, I, I'm, I'm think I'm talking about small businesses. I don't think they were selling on Amazon at that rate either back then. So I I know what you've seen over the years is probably an exponential uptrend, uh, right? With Amazon traffic and sales. Exactly. I mean, more and more people come to the platform. I think uh, some of the latest numbers I've seen 
from prime membership standpoint is I think there's a hundred, 110 million or maybe more 170. I can't remember. Um, but just to put that in perspective, I mean, 69% of all online product searches are starting on Amazon. So, you know, if you're selling any type of physical product, you have to be there or you're just like losing out on free traffic pretty much. Yeah. So that's the way we always approach it and try to help our clients understand the value of the platform. I mean, back then, yeah, it definitely was a lot more open. There's a lot more people that were you know, one person businesses importing stuff and selling it. Now there's a lot more established brands, but that yeah. doesn't mean that, you know, whether you're trying to start a business or whether you're trying to scale a business, that doesn't mean you can't get in there and still be successful just because other people are already doing well. Yeah. And that's, that's why I want to talk about, um, selling successfully selling on Amazon on today's uh, podcast. Cause you, you get a mixed bag. I'm, I'm you, I'm, I usually default to both. And I'm a both and guy when it comes to sales and marketing, I don't like the, Hey, you either do this or that. It's like, well, you could have e-commerce and you could be profitable on Amazon, you know, like, why not both? But I see a lot of times and, you know, online, there's always the rivalries like iPhones better. No Android. It's like, well, Amazon, no Shopify. So it's, it's interesting. It's interesting to say the least. But one, one more question I have for you. What was your entry? What was your entry into marketing? I'm always interested to know, like, at what point did marketing catch your eye and, and you identify like, hey, I'm I'm actually really good at this. Yeah, it's actually funny because my background's not in marketing at all. Um, <laughs> I studied uh, political science, international relations, yep. economics. Um, I worked in consulting. I worked in real estate before this. Uh, and yeah, it kind of just happened when we started selling. I mean, we the first time we put up our products, we you know took we absorbed a lot of content, figured out the best way to do things. But you know, we put up our first product. I think the first day we sold thirty units. And from there, we were just, we were hooked. We were like, ah, this is awesome. <laughs> uh, we ended up growing our first brand to about $60,000 a month in sales. Mm -hmm. um, our second brand, you know, we had some issues with it. didn't get as successful. Um, and that's kind of when we realized, like, yeah, we're pretty good at this. Like, you know, figuring out how to make things stand out on the Amazon platform, how to do the paid advertising. Yeah. All things we were kind of figuring out on our own. Um, but by figuring it out on our own, we were still so much further ahead from everybody else that never really invested in the platform. So oh, man. that's how we got our start. And that's how we got a head start over a lot of the competition and a lot of other you know, agencies that are out there now. Yeah, I love it, man. You, I'm, I'm seeing a trend like the unintentional marketer is usually the strongest marketer, right? There's like I, I've, I find myself in, in a similar uh, in a similar um with similar background, different path, because, you know, engineering, uh, very much uh, analytical driven writing code. Any, it, the only thing that I thought of marketing was like used car salesmen or people who try to come to my house and sell me magazines, you know, <laughs> and, and growing up, it was hilarious because that was the only time where you would be hiding in your own house. Like, Shh, don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't let anybody I remember know those days. Wow. <laughs> you know, um, and that was my relationship with marketing. So when the internet evolves and introduces marketing as a viable means of growing your business and marketing and selling and connecting with people beyond your, your, your geographical uh, location, it was, it was initially hard for me to yeah. really embrace like, can I do that? Cause I had this negative stigma um, <laughs> in my head this whole time, but um, man, you start to learn that marketing is really about relationships, right? Like yeah. relationships at scale um, and being able to identify what somebody needs, not convince them, right? Find yeah. the people who need what you're, what you have and strategically placing it in front of them, making that buying decision easy. So we, we get into Amazon crowded marketplace, crowded marketplace. I, I, I will admit I will admit, and maybe it's COVID, but I am an avid Amazoner. Uh, I, there are times where I will, I don't know if this is bad or not, but Mike, there will be times where I'll be in the store and yeah. I'll see something. I say, oh, I could just order that off Amazon, you know, cause I, maybe I don't want to stand in line. Mike, I'm in the store. 
I, yeah. What, uh, so I'm going to wait a whole day for this product. Yeah. I'd rather have the box shipped to me, <laughs> shipped <laughs> to me often. I could get it cheaper. So I'd assume, man, that so many people are shopping on Amazon yet. So many businesses suffer with trying to, with, with truly utilizing it. Yeah. So what is break, break it down for us, Mike, treat us all like <laughs> children, give us the milk. What is an Amazon sales funnel? So this is going to be a very, very deep, <laughs> deep answer. Um, you know, when you think about, when we think about what happened over the past year, you know, COVID comes out, there's all these restrictions on going into stores and that's still happening. So a lot of yeah. store owners are suffering. Yep. There's a bigger shift to get into e-commerce and there's so many options of where to go in e-commerce. I mean, you got Amazon, you got Walmart, you got Target, you know, building your own website, driving your own traffic there. There is no one right answer for what's right for your business. Yeah. Uh, the way I always explain it is that you probably you know, kind of like what you said before the end, it's like, you should be on all of them. I yeah. mean, you should get your pre- your product, your presence out there as much as possible. Yeah. I mentioned before that, you know, 69% of searches are starting on the Amazon platform. So when we think about brand awareness, brand discovery, and more of that top of the sales funnel or the mm-hmm. top of the funnel aspects, mm-hmm. Amazon's great for that mm-hmm. because that's where you can get the exposure. It's where people are already going. So you just need to get the visibility out there. Mm-hmm. And the other great thing is that people that are going to Amazon have a high purchase intent. So when we think of the sales funnel within Amazon, it's actually pretty shallow. I mean, you know, you, you'll get your people in and if they like the product, they're going to buy it. You know, maybe they'll click a couple other ones, see what else is out there. But Amazon's just one piece that fits within your broader e-commerce sales funnel and making sure that that sales channel is built properly or that funnel is built properly is extremely important to seeing success across all your other platforms. Yeah. And I think that's how I would start explaining it. Now, when we talk about Amazon specifically, you know, I mean, you probably know it since you shop on Amazon so much. What happens when you go to a, a, a product detail page or a listing and, you know, the photos are terrible or the copy doesn't make sense? Do you, per- or it has bad reviews? Do you purchase yep, the product? Yep. Never, man. Never. Exactly. So starting with the fundamentals, making all your content look good on the platform is the first key to get anyone to even consider your brand. Mm. And what we always recommend is, you know, keep your branding consistent across different platforms. So, you know, if you have your own website already, you have your own color schemes, your own branding style uh, guidelines, whatever it may be, make sure you're using those across all your platforms because that's going to improve the customer experience. It's going to make it seem more legitimate. You know, they're going to f- have a better experience while buying. So that's the first start. Then from there, we just need to start getting uh, maximizing the visibility. And that's where the paid advertising comes in. That's where we start filling the top of that funnel. And, you know, after that, it's just trying to maximize that conversion rate by using different promotions, different tactics like that. So there's a lot in that. I know. Um, I'm sure we'll go into it more. Yeah, more yeah, yeah. I, I would like to break some of it down. Yeah. yeah. So um, when you talk about advertising on Amazon's platform, so the good thing about this is I have done no advertising on Amazon's platform. So <laughs> I feel like I can I'm going to try to harness the questions that somebody would ask that has no experience. Right. But I know I'm already skewed because I've advertised on other platforms. But Is it it, it, am I saying this right when, you know, I search for something on Amazon and the first few results say sponsored? Is that the advertising that you're you're talking about? It's one of the different ad types. I mean, there's uh, there's three different ad types. Then within each ad type, there's a different number of placements. So Mm. in reality, there's probably, I don't know, 30, 40 different places that ads show up on the Amazon platform and you probably don't even realize it. Wow. Wow. Cause, cause each place does not, is not labeled as sponsored. Like, like you would know it's a call out like on, on Google. I know if I don't have my ad blocker on those first, first few results, they're all paid. So I can see who's running advertising and who's not same with Facebook. Yep. Um, but Amazon you're saying is not, is, is, is a bit more discreet depending on the, the location. Yeah, it might, it may say it, but it may not be that clear on what exactly it is. So like, for example, you know, those first three products that show up when you go to a search page, yep, those are ads. You might get a a headline at the top. That's an ad. You're going to get more of those sponsored products within the search page results. 
you're going to get more at the bottom. Uh, you're probably going to see another sponsored products related to the search at the bottom of that. Oh, you go to the wow. product detail page, you're going to see, um, you know, uh, an ad placement right below the buy button, another ad placement below the bullet points, uh, further ad placements further down. Um, you know, they're just everywhere. And, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes they're obvious, sometimes they're not, but I, Amazon's constantly, you know, A-B testing their platform, figuring out what ads are getting the best results, what placements are working the most. And at the end of the day, what's driving them the most ad revenue. So you yeah. know, they're, they're good at that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now that you say it just in my memory now, I'm starting to realize, yeah, I remember that. And then they'll say also <laughs> bought this other yeah. people bought this and it's like this plus this. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, I oh, guess yeah. I do need that as well. So now it becomes, you know, traditional advertising. It doesn't matter what platform you're on. It it's all about the copy, right? The keywords. So is Amazon heavily keyword driven when it comes to like the title or is it more so you've got, you've got to have your description. I know it's both, but what, how, what, how does Amazon prioritize what somebody's typing in that search bar and what to put in front of people? For sure. So there's a couple things there when we're talking about the content itself, uh, you know, the priority of uh, keywords, like where you want to put your best keywords, you know, your yeah. best keywords should be in the title. Your next best keywords should be in the bullet points. Mm. The next best keywords should be in the product description. And then, you know, the last keywords are going to go in the back end. There's actually a place to put additional search terms on the back end oh, of Amazon. Gotcha. And all of that helps Amazon index it on the platform. So now that we understand a little bit of how the products are placed or what they're indexed for, the way that you actually get your product ranking higher. So if we think about it in like SEO perspective, how do you get to page one on Google? Well, you have relevant content. You have a lot of other sources linking to your content, and that's going to give you more visibility on Google. Now, if we take that concept to the Amazon side, how am I going to show up higher for the search term toothbrush, for example? Okay. Well, I need to get as many conversions as I can on the, on the keyword toothbrush or related keywords. The more conversions I get on that keyword, the more relevancy signals I'm sending to Amazon saying, Hey, when someone searches this, they're buying my product. That means my product's relevant. You move further and further up. So starts with having the right keywords and then it starts, and then it goes on to advertising on those keywords to make sure that you're maximizing uh, your your organic visibility over time. And that's really how you're going to be able to really game, well, I don't want to say game a system, but you know, start growing a lot faster when you, those two things are aligned. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, w- when it comes to setting expectations, uh, you, you all help a lot of small businesses m- navigate this space, right? Yeah. Um, what would a small, what should a small business have in mind in terms of investment to be profitable on Amazon? And, and, you know, my definition of profitable, of course, you know, you have break even, but like, I'm doing this at a rate where I could, I could see this for a living, right? Like what, <laughs> what kind of investment should somebody have? Cause I find that it's different, right? It's different for every platform. And with all things in marketing and sales, it's different per business too. don't know the lifetime customer value, don't know your fulfillment. You know, there's a lot of variables, but if you could uh, give a, a, a rule of thumb, we'll say um, a rule yeah. of thumb. If somebody says, man, I heard you on the all systems go podcast and I'm, I want to try this out. Yeah. Like where, what state of, what state of business revenue <laughs> should they be in to, to, to have fair expectations of, of, of Amazon. Okay. I think I'm going to try to break this into a couple different categories. Okay. I mean, a lot of times we have, like, this is a good example just because we're coming through uh, the COVID pandemic. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you might have a business that has no revenue online right now, no e-commerce presence. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, they need to break, start bringing money in the door. Yes. They should focus obviously on just getting the low, you know, low cost keywords, high row as keywords, uh, long tails are going to be great for that. Mm. You might not, the ad budget is probably going to be small, probably one to $2,000 a month it comes out to about, uh, 30 to $60 a day yep. on ads. Um, and doing that, you know, that'll generate sales and you know, making sure their price points are correct. They should be able to generate, you know, a good margin there. If they're targeting long tail keywords, they're going to be profitable for them. Got it. 
that next step up, and this is kind of just the, the evolution of the businesses within the Amazon platform, that next step up is going to want to scale that. Mm-hmm. So now how do we, uh, maybe we accept a little bit of a lower ROAS, but how can we maximize our visibility and get you know more brand consideration? Maybe mm-hmm. they have other sales channels that are also bringing in money for them. Um, you know, they might be, they might be the ones that are looking for break even, or, you know, just maximizing the, the brand visibility. They, they, maybe they'll accept a little margin, um, you know, nothing crazy. So that's a whole nother level. And that's, you know, that's probably anywhere from, you know, two to $10,000 in advertising to really start scaling. Mm. Once you get beyond that, these are the companies that are really invested in the Amazon platform, really invested in growing their brands, you know, maximizing the visibility, getting their product out there to as many people as possible. They're doing probably $10,000 a month or more on ad spend. I mean, I have clients that I manage, you know, 50 to $60,000 a month alone in ad spend. Um, and they're getting, you know, three ROAS, four ROAS on it. Yeah. So yeah. they're when it comes down to, now at the volume we're doing, not only, so there's two things here that we're seeing is that, because of the volume we're doing, uh, they may be making a smaller margin, but they're selling so many more units that they're actually generating significant revenue. Sure. Or because of the volume of units they're doing, they may be actually uh, actually, ab- actually able excuse me, to uh, get volume discounts from their manufacturer when they're going to purchase. So they're increasing their margin that way. Mm-hmm. So those are, two di- those are kind of like the three different tiers, I would say, that people fall in. Um, you know, if you're just getting started on the platform, trying to make your business just, you know, starting to make some money you should always focus on the long tail stuff. It's going to be the lowest cost, give you the, the highest margin overall. Yeah. Um, the volume just might not be as high because some of the keywords on, on the long tail side probably don't get as many searches, you know, as you start growing online and get more comfortable and in investing in the advertising, there's a lot more things you can do. Mm-hmm. Even once you get beyond like that first three levels, there's a whole nother world, which is the, the DSP side of Amazon that you can use to actually build your brand outside of Amazon. And there's a ton of value in that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's the way I would kind of yeah, break now, it down. Now, what's that? That's a new acronym, DSP. I'd assume maybe the D is for digital. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it stands for, uh, I just call it display, but I'm pretty oh, sure it's okay. demand demand side programmatic advertising. Okay, okay. Um, so it's all display advertising on Amazon with Amazon's network and within other third party ad networks. Oh. And the great thing with this is that you can kind of link your data that you have from the seller side to the DSP. So now you have the access to the display network. You can do retargeting ads to pe- people that have purchased your products before mm-hmm. You can push them back to Amazon. You can push them to your own website on Shopify. Now you can start capturing those emails and start That's actually building building a real, you know, brand and a real funnel outside of Amazon. So that DSP, uh, you know, you, you need to invest a little bit more in the money on the advertising side. But once you actually have a, kind of achieved that scale on the sales side on the Amazon platform, it's a huge opportunity to start using DSP to start growing your business outside of Amazon. No, that that is that is really good. So it's, it's their display network. Um yeah where you can take them off of the Amazon ecosystem. Exactly. Now that's really interesting. So you're saying um, now is that reserved for people who are selling at a certain volume? Cause I can't imagine they would just open that up. <laughs> it's actually uh, yeah, there's definitely minimums, but yep. um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. So you, you can use DSP whether if you're selling products on Amazon or yep. if you're selling like uh, uh, like insurance or like, you know, uh, non-physical goods. You can also use DSP for it. Um, but like I said, there's a minimum. You usually have to work with another agency, uh, and they'll Mm -hmm. combine your ad spend to reach those minimums Uh, right now. That minimum is about a million dollars a month. mm -hmm. Um, so you really have to, you know, pull your resources with a lot of other people to get to that minimum. Um, and you know, just to give you some perspective on how much that's growing. I mean, you've probably seen the numbers that, uh, Amazon overtook, uh, all the other ad networks is the largest ad network right now. Wow. Uh, they did 11 billion in ad revenue last year. And it's because of how quickly the DSP side is growing. So uh, the minimum went from 35,000 per month to a million because mm. there's so much demand and not enough supply within the DSP network. So wow. um, yeah, it's definitely super interesting stuff. You know, once you have that, 
that ability, you know, once you have a good sales volume, once you're making money there, you have that extra money to invest in a DSP. That is the next big step to really, you know, take the Amazon sales funnel and build it into a broader sales funnel for your entire brand. Yeah, I could see it, you know, not not having any fingers or toes in the space, but I can see the business model really forming. I'd imagine you're you're you've seen this probably time and time again with your clients as they navigate different or they grow through different phases uh-huh. and they're able to start taking advantage of more and more that Amazon has to offer. And even though they're growing, I still it still feels correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it still feels like there's a lot of untapped potential in Amazon. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. there's always new opportunities to keep growing. Amazon's always rolling out new ad tools or other you know tools to help you sell more on the platform. They have their own initiatives that they're trying to push like the influencer side of it. Mm. And, you know, a lot of more social media aspects to the Amazon app on your phone. But I mean, just ad network wise, there's so many ways you can leverage all of Amazon's data, mm. even though you don't get direct access to it to start building, you know, your own database of customers and then start growing outside the platform. So yeah, I mean, once you once you understand that piece to it, the DSP thing, that's that's the big link. So so many people stay yeah. away from Amazon because of you know they don't control the data, yeah. the margins are low, yeah. um, you know they they can't compete on price point, whatever it is. But now once you consider, I have all the sales volume and all the sales data, now I can leverage Amazon's other ad network to help me grow my business. That is the big transition that, yeah. that really opens people's eyes to it. Man, that was a perfect segue, Mike, because all the while. You know, I I like to feel and I could be off, but I don't think I am, Mike, but I like to feel like I hear my listeners voice in the future. And it feels like as we're talking about this, somebody's like, man, this sounds really good. Maybe we need to try Amazon again. And right when they say that, they either hear a voice from a friend or a voice from their previous self saying, but they don't give you all of your data. There's there's no way for you to get customer information, this, this and that. And before we'll say pre DSP, right? What what should somebody's approach be to Amazon? Because it's true. It's not a Shopify where you're getting all of that information directly into your into your account. So what I come up with is what are some strategies that you're helping businesses do getting those repeat buyers in and navigating to success without owning the data that Amazon collects? Sure. There's definitely a few metrics you can kind of look at to, to okay. measure your uh, you know, brand success or uh, brand recognition or brand loyalty. I guess that's a good way to put it. Okay. Um, one of them is the subscribe and save program. So maybe you've seen that on Amazon where it's, you know, you buy it, get a 5% discount and you get a new product each month or, you know, every two months or whatever it is. Uh, if you see your subscribe and save numbers going up over time, that's a good way to show that, you know, people are, interested in your brand, they want your product, it's going to continue to buy it. You don't have access to who they are, but it's a measure of how successful you're being from a brand loyalty spec, uh, perspective mm-hmm. on the platform. Mm-hmm. Another one is uh, there's a program called brand registry. And once you have your brand registered, so if you have a trademark, you can get brand registered, uh, you get access to other tools. One of those mm-hmm. is sponsored brands. So sponsored brands uh, gives you the ability to actually see your new to brand purchases So every time someone clicks through your ad, if they've purchased your product before, they, you know, Amazon's data all pulls that together. Uh, It's recognized. If not, it's a new to brand purchase. So you can see how well of a job, uh, how good of a job you are doing finding new customers to your brand over time with the the sponsored brands. So again, this is another piece that it's not, you know, it's not the customer's email address, but you're seeing how well you're doing and finding new customers over time. And then the last piece there is uh, with the brand registry, you have access to brand analytics and brand mm-hmm. analytics gives you a few good pieces of data. One is uh, search terms. So what uh, search terms are people, you know, are you showing up the best for, are you converting the highest fo- uh, for, it gives you, I think three or four uh, of the top. Uh, it shows what keywords you rank in the, I think the top three places. Uh, and how you're converting for when someone searches those keywords. So mm-hmm. it'll give you the benchmark against how your competitors are doing on those top pages as well. The other one is uh, market basket. So what products are they purchasing with your product, which is a good way to show you how maybe you can advertise on that product or mm-hmm. you know how you can leverage that knowledge to 
expand product lines or, you know, figure out some type of marketing from that perspective. Uh, alternative purchase is another one. What are people buying instead of my product? So there's a lot of good stuff there. And then finally, they do give you some demographic information. So they give you age, they give you ed uh, education, income, location, and there's one more I'm blanking on, but you can also leverage that, you know, that data to a certain extent to use it within, you know, social media marketing, for example, on Facebook. Yeah. Um, so now you have some demo data. Let's use that to run some Facebook ads and see if we can get people to our website. So while you might not be at the point where you're ready to scale to DSP, there's a lot of other ways to leverage the data within the platform to measure how well you're doing in growing your brand over time. No, that's that's refreshing, man. I'm glad you broke that down because you've you've got my wheels turning now because I'm I'm looking <laughs> at it as some of the data, some of the data that you you mentioned uh, is key for even content creation. Yep. You know, if you want to put a content, I, I ran into a brand who did who had really strong content marketing. And when it when it on their website and when you went to buy it, it took, took you to Amazon. Right. Yeah. Um, so I think having a strategic approach, because uh, I've had that question in, in my mind, but now understanding a bit more of the analytics that are provided to you, there's there are quite a few trends about yeah. your own product that you can identify and figure out just with what Amazon wow. provides. It's you know, they 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 give you the, they may not give you the the who. Right. They may yeah. not give you the exact name and, 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 and contact information. But within within the, the information that you've you've listed out uh, with a strategic approach in mind that understands how to leverage their ecosystem. I mean, that that could be very powerful data. Is that what you. So let me ask you this. What what other dimensions of marketing have you helped businesses with once you start to collect that data that Amazon provides you about their product sales? Yeah. So we have a lot of partners there on that side, you know, on the social media side or email, uh, well, email marketing once they get their website going, but yeah. we work with them. So we'll kind of, you know, the way we approach it, we, we're partners with them. We're essentially slotting into yeah. their business and we're managing the sales channel for them. So we're leveraging the knowledge that we're building within the platform and trying to help their other teams, whether it be social media, you know, whether it be other paid uh, networks like SEM or, you know, uh, you know, social ads or whatever it may be. Yeah. Uh, to leverage that data. I mean, there's great example, um, you know, and obviously this, this depends on platforms, depends, depends yeah. on products, but if you're selling a product that is primarily targeted to women, women are primarily purchasing the product. You're getting that demo data on Amazon. It's telling you now, where can you take that data yes. and go apply it the same way? The one that sticks out in my mind all the time is Pinterest because Pinterest mm. I think is 80% women uh, it's one of the highest used platforms. I mean, that more or less is your target audience. So now how can we use this uh, demo data to help start building the ad network on Pinterest? You know, same thing on Facebook. It's just working with other teams within their, their uh, companies to help them grow. Mm -hmm. I mean, one day we hope to grow our business to be able to provide these services ourselves. But yeah. right now we got to do what we got to do. And yeah, I think you brought up another good point there. Going back to what we talked about earlier, you know, your background in marketing. I mean, digital marketing now is so much about the data and the analytics and understanding it and seeing the yes. trends and how it all pieces together. That's why <laughs> engineers are really good at it. Finance people are really good at it. Um, just be able to pull all that together and make sense of it. Yeah. And maybe the creative side they don't have, but they, you know, they can hire someone to do That's the creative it. side and it just pulls it all together. So it gives you a full spectrum, man. It gives you a full spectrum of what it takes to be successful in digital marketing. Right. Um, yeah. that, that I love, man, I'm, I'm trying not to get caught up. I'm, I'm looking out my window here. Cause my, my mind, you've got my mind going with just all of that data. I, you know, I'm just one of those people. If you show me the trends, right. Show me what people are doing. The next step is so straightforward. Like just yep. follow the steps that the data is telling you to take. Don't get creative. Don't yep. get in your feelings and get emotional about it. <laughs> like take all of that out and, and, and look at the data and see what it's telling you to do. And so, so I know uh, uh, I've got buddies that will, you know, run a lean MVP model using Facebook. They'll, you know, put an idea out there, run some advertising to it, see how it's see how it uh, how the market receives it or see uh -huh. what demographic receives it more. And then they start to, you know, flesh out marketing around that. Have you have you seen that 
in Amazon. I don't I don't know if it's a if that approach would work in the Amazon marketplace. It's just a higher investment to kind of do it that okay. way okay. Um, because you only get that data once you're brand registered. So you first have to have a trademark got approval. It, so yep. uh, if you're going to test it for the demo data, it doesn't make sense. There's definitely opportunities to test a product. And we've done that ourselves. And we help some people do that where, you know, they'll, we'll research a product idea, you know, buy a hundred units, throw them yeah. up on the platform, see how they sell, um, see what the margin is, you know, see what the advertising cost is, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then from there, see whether it makes sense to scale the product. I Got think it. that's more of like a, yeah, sure. a flexible, flexible, nimble approach. And then once it makes sense on that point, then you can get the demo data with the, the trademark and yeah. things like that. So that's the way I would really approach it on the Amazon platform to try to see new product ideas and get them out there. It's definitely going to be a little different than Facebook though. Yeah. I love it, man. As we're, man, Mike, I, <laughs> and the more you talk, the more the questions multiply in my mind. But um, two things I wanted to ask you, man, one relative to you, you and your, your growth, and then the other relative to the growth of your clients, right? Okay. Um, if you look at your experience, um, you know, with Amazon and growing your business, learning the platform and everything, what would you say? I like to talk in growth levers. Like what would you say was that one lever that, that you were able to pull that, that, added the most value it could be revenue it could be client base it what was that thing that one thing that you said man once we figured this out you know we saw all the tide rose all boats in in the ocean for us yeah for sure i mean when it comes to you know running the agency and growing this business that i'm in right now mm -hmm. uh product quality you know mm -hmm. we think well a lot of times we think of product quality as a physical product you know does it work does it break blah 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 but the reality is that the product you're putting out there as a service in a marketing agency is extremely important. Mm. You know, you might not be able to deliver amazing results all the time, but that's not the only part of your product. Your product is your communication with your clients, your ability to help in, uh, to help them dive in, solve their problems, whatever it may be. That's all part of the product that a lot of people don't pay attention to. And I think once we started focusing more on the whole list, the holistic side and not just maximizing the sales or getting the best results, um, we were seeing a lot more retention. We were seeing, you know, the business grow, the revenue grow a lot faster over time because we were retaining more revenue. Yeah. Um, so for me, product quality on the service side is extremely important. Um, you know, I think if you're going to be growing an agency, that's one of the most important things you should be focused on. Man, I love that holistic product quality man and and you're right you're absolutely right people get short-sighted real quick <laughs> and they don't understand or i should say they don't i won't say they don't understand but um they neglect to think about the, the holistic experience that uh their clients are going through so that's a great one man and then the second is to your client base you've seen i can't imagine how many businesses you've helped <laughs> and how many trends and war stories you could probably share but if there were one thing that you saw consistent across all of them in achieving success with Amazon, what what would that one thing be? Within the Amazon platform, mm -hmm. I would say the thing that's the most important is just playing by Amazon's rules. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people try to take shortcuts, try to do you know, black hat stuff, try to figure out all these ways to just game the system. Whenever you do that, Amazon's going to catch on eventually. I mean, you know, there's so many different things we could talk about trying to purchase reviews to get for your product. You know, Amazon can flag you for that. Mm. Um, not disclosing, the, you know, some aspect of your product that might qualify it as a medical product and be restricted in certain ways or an adult product and be restricted in certain ways. Mm. We've worked with plenty of people that have tried to do to go that route. Uh, and Amazon always catches them. I mean, mm. it might take a while. They might see success in the short run, but what happens when you start achieving that success and then Amazon catches on and shuts you down? I mean, you know, there goes your entire sales channel for that product that's yeah. gone now. Yeah. So it's better just doing things by the book, making sure you're all, uh, you know, set up properly from, from the beginning, not doing anything wrong. It's going to eliminate the chance of you getting kicked off the platform. It's going to eliminate the chance of any real bad thing happening. So again, playing by the rules is the best way to, to be successful on yeah. the Amazon platform. Yeah. Makes sense, man. Learn the rules, man. Learn, learn the rules. So at least you know when you're breaking them. Yep. <laughs> the very least. That's important. Right. 
Uh, well, Mike, man, I want to thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. This was great for me. I'm glad I did not dive too deep into this topic um, because I didn't want it to go over people's head. I feel like the questions that I had are natural questions that everybody else had. Um, you did a, a great job with uh, describing them or answering them, I should say. And it and I see opportunity, man. I, I do. I see a lot of opportunity. I don't think you can just look at Amazon as a channel just to sell. You have to have a strategy and understand the different levels that your advertising and revenue unlock for you and then have a strategy for that, too. <laughs> right. Which makes sense why you are who you are. Right. Why your yeah. agency exists um, to help people navigate the, those growth cycles. So um, if if anybody listening wanted to get uh, more information with you, connect with you in any way, where should they go? <laughs> of course. Well, Chris, it sounds like I actually did a good job explaining it. If you're able to <laughs> piece all of that together. Um, but no, but the best way to get in touch with us is, <clears throat> excuse me, either directly at our website, amzadvisors.com. Or you can email me directly. It's mike at amzadvisors.com. I'm always glad to answer any questions or concerns that you have about the Amazon platform. Uh, and yeah, I mean, just send us a message, set up a call. We're glad to talk anytime. So Great, great. Well, I'll post um, those links in the show notes. So everybody listening, they'll be available to you. Um, automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. Mike, again, thank you. <laughs> thank you for coming on to the podcast. This has been great, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, Chris, thanks for having me. I really appreciate your time today. And hopefully your audience learned something. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure they will, man. Have a great day. All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of the All Systems Go podcast. And here's what I want you to do. Think of that product based business. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're on Shopify, Illusion, WooCommerce, Magento, BigCommerce, put in any e-commerce selling platform and do me a favor and share this with them just so they have additional insight on how they could potentially use Amazon as another sales channel for their business. As Mike said, we really can't afford not to take an omni-channel approach to our sales. Amazon is not the end all be all, but it can be profitable. Um, I don't know about you, but my gear started turning once he started to talk about data and, and the trends and, and everything that you could get from Amazon. Uh, I just really started to, you, you all know me, I, I, the information, there is no automation without information. So however, however you can get those trends and information on your business and on your products, it's, it's so critical and so vital. So I hope that this enlightened you. Uh, for those of you who are looking at Amazon as a viable channel, a potential channel, maybe this was just that extra push that you needed. So be sure to share this with that product based business owner, um, whether their scales are their sales are scaling or not. Share this with them and let them know. I'm um, also now is the time that I extend my personal invitation to you to become a subscriber of the podcast. Uh, we are available in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can subscribe on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast, the All Systems Go podcast is available. Your five star rating and review is appreciated in advance. And every Thursday, make sure you're subscribed because every Thursday we release new episodes just like this that will help you become more well rounded in the digital marketing space. At Automation Bridge, we're dedicated to training digital marketing professionals to become automation service providers. And that just means being able to efficiently navigate marketing strategy as well as marketing technology. Put them together and build systems for your small business that will help you scale continually. OK, these these small businesses and enterprises are in dire need of marketers with that ability. OK, so if that's you, if when you're listening to this and you're like, man, that I, I want to do that for a living, I, I can tell you this. Uh, the space of marketing automation is an evolving and 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 it is taking off. We are still in the incipient stages of this space. And it's so exciting to see how many ways automation can impact a business. So if you want to be part of that impact, if you want to be part of the small business revolution where we're equipping these businesses with automation done right, 
I will say I would invite you to go to automationbridge.com forward slash ASP and take the next steps to talk to myself or someone on my team to assess if you would be a good fit for our program where we can equip you with the exact framework that I use. I use and have used. Okay, this is not theoretical. This is practical. It works uh, that I've used to scale businesses to millions, countless of times in all industries. So if that's you, if you listen to this and it just it just it goes beyond peaking your interest, you're like, yes, that is what I want to do. Automationbridge.com forward slash ASP. Let's get a time set up where we can talk and discuss what the best next next steps for you are. The time is now and the need has never been greater than right now. My voice to your ears is the truth. OK, I'm seeing it with my own eyes. I'm serving it with my hands and I'm building an army. <laughs> I'm building a community of of automation service providers who are ready to take on the challenge and and grow the space and ensure that these small businesses are able to digitize their transitional business operations to be able to operate in this digital age. OK, all the show notes are uh, all the show notes in podcast. Previous podcasts are accessible at automationbridge.com forward slash podcast. You can subscribe there and listen to all episodes at your leisure. So until next time, I see you online. Automate responsibly, my friends. Automate.